a page view with a circular page transition, a customizable set of predefined form elements for creating settings pages without the usual boilerplate and many other valuable packages released in calendar week 41. Welcome to SyntechOps, my name is Jay and this channel is all about programming. If you're interested in a weekly summary of the latest Flutter and Dart packages, subscribe to this channel and now let's get started with calendar week 41. Number 10 is Flutter Page View Indicator and this one builds indicators marks for page view from any widget and it is very customizable. Number 9 is Circular Page View, a Flutter package for Android, iOS and web, which helps creating animated circular page views with customizable options. From this package we get the Circular Page View widget that needs an item count, a controller, in this case a page controller, a list of items which are our pages, then an on-page changed method, an inner radius and an offset. So this is very similar like the setup of a common page view or a bottom navigation bar. We have a current index value as an integer and a list of pages. In this case we have three containers with different colors, a page controller and a method that returns us the page of the index. And yeah, we have those two variables here, inner radius and offset. And yeah, as you can see, we get not the default transition and that we know from the page view, but this is more like a circular motion. On number eight is Mainstream Extended, a stream builder alternative that provides builder and event callbacks, including default visual handlers. On number seven is Pay you Flutter, a library for paying money using Pay you Money, which is a payment service. On number 6 is Radio Button Form Field, a Flutter package to create radio buttons as form fields, each contained in a list tile with the buttons as the leading widget. On number 5 is Day Night Theme Flutter, a Flutter plugin that helps you to automatically change the theme of the app with sunrise and sunset. For the implementation you have to define your theme data for your light and dark theme. Your material app is returned by the builder method of the daynight theme class. Here you provide the dark and light theme data and you set the sunrise hour and sunrise minutes and the sunset hour and sunset minutes. And with the builder method you pass over the selected theme to the theme attribute of your material app. On number 4 is Center Web View, a new Flutter package for the web which keeps your contents in the center of the screen and adjusts to the responsive changes in size. I have no idea what kind of problem this package tries to solve, so maybe you should try it out by yourself. On number 3 is Fix Dart, a Dart Fix Protocol 4.4 client library. On number two is Easy Dynamic Theme, a new and easy approach on Flutter themes. With this one you will get your OS defined theme or just force one of your preference, light or dark and of course persist this choice in your device. The setup is done inside of the main function. Here we create a theme mode variable and an instance of shared preferences from which we receive the settings and in this example this is represented by a bool and depending on whether this bool is true or false we initialize the theme mode variable. Finally we have to wrap our app inside of a easy dynamic theme widget which holds this initial theme attribute and this one gets passed over to the theme mode variable of the material app. To change the theme we can use this switch theme method and to get the current theme we can use this theme mode getter. And here we come to the number one of the best packages of calendar week 41. What a coincidence with 41 likes as well. Clean settings, a settings UI generator with sane defaults. This package removes the need for boilerplate code and provides a rich set of highly opinionated widgets. Features of this package are setting sections, out of the box widgets for multiple types and read only items. Let's have a quick look on the API reference to see what we exactly get from this. So here we can see we get 
up to seven classes. Then we have a bunch of constants and we get an enum item priority. And all of those classes inherit from either stateful widget or stateless widget, but only setting radio value is a default class. Having a closer look on the constants, we can see that we can make use of a subtitle, a title, a section title, a separator and a wheel picker item. And the text style of the subtitle and title is determined by the item priority which we set for the specific setting item. And the item priority, as I already said, is an enum. And this enum can have the value disabled, high, low and normal. Okay, with that said, let's jump into the code example of the documentation. All right, this is our app settings example screen, starting with a stateful widget, which is probably necessary for displaying the UI changes without the use of a state management solution. Inside of the state class, a global key is defined, which we provide to the scaffold. And of course, all of the contents that we can see here on the screen are inside of the scaffold's body. Inside the container, we have a setting container, which is one of the package classes that we saw in the API reference. And as you can see here in the screen, we have four different sections, demo options, appearance, interactive and inbox. And in order to create those sections, you need a setting container because this one holds a list of setting section objects. So here inside of the setting container, we have the section attribute and this one holds the list for the different sections. A single setting section has a title as a string and an items attribute as a list of widgets. And if we have a closer look here, then we can see this one holds one item, which is a setting checkbox item that we can see here in the example. The setting checkbox item has five attributes that we can set. Three of them are required. The title, which is a string, the value, which is a bool and unchanged, which is a value changed of bool. And then we can set a priority. The default one is item priority normal. And if we want, then we can define a description. Okay, let's have a look on what we have set inside of this object. We have the title, disable all items. Then we have the description, which is a little bit smaller in terms of font size. The item priority is set to a high, which is why this one is red. And here we are using a disabled demo items bool. This one is defined here at the top and is currently set on false. And we can change this one by setting this check mark and if we do this, then all of the other settings items are disabled. And in order to make the appearance of other setting items dependent on this value or any other value, we can make this possible by making the item priority dependent on this bool value. Now we are already inside of the next section, which is called appearance. Let's remove this check mark. And as you can see, we have a simple counter that has a display value. This one takes a counter variable that we already defined here at the top. And this one is set to zero and is converted to a string in order to represent it here in the UI. And by tapping on this one, we can increment this counter. The next setting item is quite similar. We have this launch unicorn startup item, which is disabled by default because we have set the item priority to disabled. To provide a selection of different options, like in this example, where we can change the theme mode, we can make use of the setting radio item class. This one takes a list of setting radio value items and each one of them consist of a string title and a string value. You can also change the data type to, for example, an integer, and then you would have to provide an integer value instead of the string. The currently selected value is determined by this theme variable, which we also have here at the top. This is set on system default. And if we change this to light, 
then we trigger the onChange function and change the theme variable to the value of the setting radio value object. The logic for that to make this work properly, of course, has to be implemented by yourself. The third section, interactive, has again a list of items. Here we have a setting confirm item and this one has the same attributes like the ones before, but additionally we have an alert title, an alert message and two functions, an on confirm function and on cancel function. By clicking on this item we get this pop-up menu and then we can choose between OK and cancel and in both cases we would get this snack bar with the message. And in the last section called inbox we have this setting switch item where we can change a value by clicking on this switch. Then we have an auto reply message window where we get this text input. This is created by this setting text item. With the setting wheel picker item we can make things selectable with this wheel picker. The setting datetime item gives us this calendar view where we can set a date. And by changing the type to time of day instead of daytime, we can change this to a time picker. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you can spare a minute, please leave me a short feedback. Subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Have a nice day and see you soon.